Today's video, we're going to look at and review a drill that I put into place uh, to develop a better stance and the better uh, foundation for boxers. In the beginning of the first stage that you, you teach is you got to teach a guy how to stand before you teach a guy how to do anything. So, you know, if you can't stand, then you can't move. So, um, you can't punch. So I used the, bo uh, the Bozu ball and another little platform that we had and I elevated, that platform's a little higher than the Bozu ball. So what he's doing in this drill here is he's working on the shoulder plane of all the all-time greats, all the guys that are great fighters. Uh, I mean, you, you're looking at the foundation of James Tony and Floyd Mayweather and Roy Jones when he was a middleweight, uh, Bernard Hopkins and Joe Lewis and Sugar Ray Robinson and Charlie Burley and Ezra Charles and and the list can go on and on. It, it's 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 a style that uh, a lot of people like to say it's the Philly uh, Philly shell style. A lot of a lot of people from Philly try to claim it. The Midwest tries to claim it. Uh, they call it the Midwest, the Midwest, you know, shoulder roll. That's where Floyd Mayweather came from and James Tony. Um, but this is the foundation of it. Um, the foundation is developing again. Like I said, it's like every other sport. It's like every other sport. People don't realize that boxing. They try to make it different than every other sport. That back leg is the post. That back leg is the foundation. It's like it's like a baseball uh, pitcher when he's digging into the dirt with that back foot to get ready to plant that foot. He's planting that foot to throw that fastball or any ball he's gonna throw. So we're trying to develop a strong post by putting him on the Boza ball and having him work his twist and his roll and his slip. If you, if you watch here, what I'm doing with him there is I'm trying to show him that a, when he's in that position, the shoulder plane is at the left shoulder is higher than the right shoulder. So you're automatically in a position to roll. And, and the thing about it is when you slip, you're still gonna be in that position. So he, when he's rolling, he's in the same position as he is when he's slipping. So he's not going to dip that left shoulder. So basically, the stance is like being like you're fighting uphill, where your left shoulder is higher than your right shoulder. You're, you're, uh, you're not punching like you're punching downhill. Uh, like, some, like I believe that when Gennady Glovkin first came over here, his, his style was a little bit more different than it is now. And I think that uh, when, he, when he came over here, he started leaning on his front foot. He started fighting downhill. And that's why he was open for overhand rights all day long against uh, Canelo Alvarez. And I think that uh, that hurt. His style has diminished over time. I think when he was over uh, Europe, he had a little bit more of a style like uh, it was a combination of a Julio Cesar Chavez and a Costa Zou, but the Costa Zou part went right out the window. Costa Zou also has this foundation style. All the great fighters have this foundation. I mean, you can go back and look at all the all-time greats, like I said, Ezra Charles and Charlie Burley. Um, so what, I'm, what you're looking at here is I'm working on him being able to be in position to throw his right uppercut at the same time I mean, in the same position that he throws his right hand. If he's got that shoulder plane, he's in position to throw a right uppercut and a right hand. Um, you know, you don't have to dip to throw the right uppercut because you're already in that, you're already in that shoulder plane, that shoulder plane where that left shoulder's out and that right shoulder's dip, and you're in position to throw that right uppercut. So you don't have to dip to throw a right uppercut. You're already there to throw the right uppercut or right hand. That's why if you watch Floyd, you watch James Tony, they'll use that shoulder roll and they can hit you, they can hit you with a right uppercut just as well as they can hit you with a right hand. And, and there is no transition in their body position. The right uppercut is in, they're in a position to throw the right uppercut and the right hand at the same time. So when I'm working with Johnny here, Johnny just started boxing. Um, he's been in the gym only a few months, couple months. He hasn't even had a fight yet, but the, this, is, this is how you develop that foundation. And you, when he first started, his natural tendencies was to uh, lean and push his weight to his front leg. So with this drill, it, 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 it forces him 
to plant his weight on his back leg and to elevate his left leg so he shoulder planes himself having the left shoulder higher. And he's dropping all that weight back on that right foot just like you would plant to throw a football. When a football player goes to throw the football, he drops and then he throws. A baseball player, they drop and then they throw. So, you know, a tennis, a, twin, a tennis player, when the ball's coming, he drops and he throws. So that weight is on that back leg and they're twisting off of that back leg. So that's what you're looking at here, what we're working on. Um, If you look right here, I'm, I'm trying to make him roll. What a couple times, like what he was doing is he would, when he would he would, he would roll here, when he would roll here, he drop his shoulder, he would drop his left shoulder and roll this way. He wants to keep that shoulder, he wants him to roll here and roll here. So just like if you watch Floyd, you watch James when guys, James Tony, when guys throw hook right hands on him, they're able to they're able to roll both punches so quick because they never get themselves out of position. If you roll and you drop that left shoulder when that right hand comes, you're not going to have time enough to roll back and get away from the right hand. So right here, I'm showing him the shoulder plane. It should be the way that shoulder plane is. It's automatically you're there to position to throw a hook. And when you throw the hook, you're there to throw the right uppercut. You don't have to dip back after you throw the hook to throw the right uppercut. Or when you hook, you don't have to dip back to get in position. When that shoulder plane's right there, you can see how I'm demonstrating there that a hook and a, a hook, so one, two, and a hook and an uppercut is the same two, same position. Your body's in the same position as when you throw a one, two, a one, two hook right hand is this you could be you could throw a one two hook right hand you could throw a one two hook right uppercut you're in the same you're going to be in the same position your body doesn't have to make a transition now here i was showing that certain ways how you um you bob under uh, bob underneath the punch and when you bob underneath the punch again when he bobs underneath the punch and he's trying to hook to the head he needs to not drop that shoulder see i'm showing him right there that he was he was actually dropping his shoulder when he's trying to go to the, to throw a head shot, a hook, left hook to the head. Now he would drop that shoulder automatically. He would when he would bob underneath. He would drop that shoulder if he was going to try to throw a left hook to the body. But he's trying to throw a left. We're practicing on throwing a left hook to the head, and he's dropping that shoulder. So he needs to just bring his feet up without dropping his shoulder down to try to get that extra reach. He's trying to lean to get that extra reach. He needs to step to get that extra range. Not not. Uh, you know, push his weight to his left left leg to try to get closer. He needs to step his back leg, his front leg and his back leg up and keep that stance to throw that hook to the head. So there he's doing a little bit better there. He's starting to get it a little bit better. Roll, roll, slip, slip, bob. And then I'm showing the different ways that James Tony does it awesome. Floyd does it great. When a guy will throw an overhand right on them, a lot of times they don't bob. You don't see them bob very much. They'll roll with punches, and if a guy tries to throw a looping overhand right, they just bow. They bend at the waist, and they bow. And they get out of the way just by bowing and bending out of the waist, and then they'll pivot out. Um, you could see um, Floyd just did that just so unreal and so beautifully against um, Marcos Maidana who was throwing looping overhand rights. He would throw straight rights and throw hooks at, at Floyd and um, if you watch that fight I mean just just defensive mastery where he would he would just he would do exactly what I'm showing Johnny right there. He would roll, 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 slip, slip and when the overhand would come he would bow. And he, when he would bow, he would take a little step in. He would take a little step in so that the overhand right would loop over top the back of his head so he wouldn't get hit behind the ear or get be hit behind the head. So when he would bow, he would, he would step in a little bit too so that, that the overhand right would go behind him. So this, this drill here is, uh, I believe, a great drill to develop a, a great foundation and a great stance. Um, just the, if you're looking to develop a kid's balance and his shoulder plane and of the all the all time greats, this is a great drill. And it, you want to start them right from the door because once they develop a bad habit, then it's so much harder to get them back in to this stance. So this is one of the drills that I use right off the bat when I get a new fighter that I want to teach them where their weight should be distributed. And um, I hope everybody enjoyed watching this video.